This week on Crossfeed. Walmart versus Islam. Sex is worship. No one knows the day or the hour, but we can narrow it down. Are you in Jesus game? And don't speak out against the Mormons. Welcome, everybody, to this week's edition of Crossfeed News. I am Dr. Jim Butler, a service pastor of St. Luke's Lutheran Church out in beautiful Data, Massachusetts. And I'm Pastor Dale Critchley, pastor of St. Paul Lutheran Church in Delaware, Iowa. Welcome, everyone, to a late edition of Crossfeed News. In fact, uh, really late because um, we're, we're starting recording about a half hour uh, later than expected because of some network problems we had. And, uh, and I haven't eaten supper yet, so this is going to be a slightly shorter episode than usual. Because Jim's an hour later than me, and he wants to go to bed soon. So, and Dale wants to eat. Yeah. So uh, let's jump right into the stories. Where do you want to start? Okay. Um, let's start with the uh, 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 the, the Jesus gang members here. Okay. Uh, this was actually um, – I, I need to preface this with this was actually submitted by somebody else. It's listed on the site. It's submitted by me. Um, but, uh, Warren, if you're watching, thanks for submitting this. And, uh, the, the problem is I, uh, he, he sent me a note and said, Hey, um, I tried to sign up and, and I'm having problems signing up. Can you just set up an account for me? And so I tried to add him and I ran into problems. Uh, I think there's a problem with our server. So if anybody else has been trying to uh, sign up for an account, uh, I apologize. Uh, we are in the process of a service switch. It's taking a little longer than expected. And uh, but once we get it done, hopefully that should take care of the problem. So um, anyway, we have. I had that story. Where did it go? <laughs> oh, here we go. It's right in front of me. Um, this is in uh, Albany, Oregon. A pair of teenagers who are suspended for gang-related behavior because they were wearing uh, crucifixes. Or actually, one was a crucifix, and the other one was a rosary uh, with a Virgin Mary on it. I thought crucifixes or uh, rosaries all had uh, uh, crucifixes on them or crosses. I don't know, but anyway, um, the principal saw the necklace and told them to put told them to put it away. Um, I was like, "Why?" Um, Yamin Salazar said, "He said it's related to gangs." And then he went, was suspended for five days for defiance and gang-related behavior. This is madness. Oh, the, the rosary had a crucifix and a tiny picture of the Virgin Mary. Oh, okay, okay. missed that. Yeah. So, um, th- they, the Roman Catholic Archdiocese of Portland um, said that they had heard of no reports of using crucifixes and rosaries to identify gangs. But the Albany police say that fellow officers in Salem and Hillsborough have been contending with crucifixes and rosaries as gang markers for the past several years, and this could indicate that that kind of thing is moving into the area. Yeah, the, the uh, police officer, Ken Fandrum, said they put gang colors on the rosaries and claimed they're religious. <sighs> Boy, this is a sticky one. No kidding. You know, because on the one hand, on the one hand, you don't want to tell people, you know, unless you're like in France or something, you don't want to tell people you can't wear something that's a, a personal expression of your religion. On the other hand, if gangs are using it as an excuse to allow kids to wear gang colors in schools, yeah, you don't want to allow that either. So, I mean, I, it seems to me they're kind of trying to err on the side of uh, caution here. Uh, yeah. I mean, part of me is going to back them. I, I, I guess, you know, my question is, is did, did, they, did they mark them in somehow? Apparently, they, they, you know, they put their gang colors on the rosary. So I guess the question you need to look at, look at the rosary, the crucifix, are there any gang colors on it? Yeah, what color are the beads, you know? And, you know, this is one of those people that are in favor of school uniforms. <laughs> you know, right here, man. 
Yeah, it takes care of that problem. Um, well, of course, you, you know, there's still... But if it's a school uniform, you're going to say, nobody can wear any religious jewelry, or nobody can wear any right. jewelry, period. Right. Um, you know, that's... The question in this case is, I mean, you know, uh, um, are they going to ban all jewelry? I mean, it's kind of interesting because one of the cops says, you know, they, they keep... Um, uh, he says... Um, um, Students were told about the markers because they morph. You can never get a solid, uh, solid target. So you know. So what's next? I mean, today it's you know he says it's crucifixes and rosaries. Tomorrow, what is it? You know, is it you know putting colors on the buttons of your shirt? So now we're going to cut yeah. off the buttons of the shirt. Yeah. Well, you know, and that's true. It, gang colors have taken on so many different um, forms over the years that. You know, you ban this, and then they the gang colors change to something else. They just keep changing them. I mean... Well, the colors stay the same. It's the markers, you know. What are they using to make the identification? Right, um, right. And here, I'd so, say, again, the one of the problems I'm going to have is that they're... Even if they're using crucifixes and rosaries, what's the proof that these kids were part of a gang? I mean, we always deal with the basic principle of you're innocent until proven guilty. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal. I mean, I don't know. You know, we don't get from this article, do the kids have any past um, connections with gangs? Um, you know, I mean, even you could even look at what kind of kids, are, what are their personalities like? You know, what are they like in school? Uh, are, are these... I, See, I'm, you know, and, and I don't know, okay, but I'm having either. a hard time. I'm, I'm having a hard time imagining if these are sort of straight A, clean cut students, then they're probably not, you know, that's probably not what sparked this. And I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm just assuming here, but you know, I'm, I'm thinking back to when I was in high school. Uh, there was one time I needed a, I was in a creative writing class, and I needed a gun. Uh, for a, a play that I had written and we were performing in class. And actually, this was uh, like 1989 or something like that. And um, and I was carrying this gun around with me because I didn't have time to go back to my locker to get it or anything. And I had it in a case, but, I mean, I was carrying a gun around school. It was a pellet gun, but nobody knew that because it was in its case. And nobody said anything. I mean, nobody batted an eye. But, you know, I was one of those kids that, um, you know, if, if we needed to, if there was a, a classroom that was locked, uh, principal considered handing me the keys to unlock it. She thought the better of it, but, um, almost did. <laughs> so what year in high school were you in 1985, 1989? Senior. Senior. You could have been I graduated in 90. <laughs> my first year. <youth> <laughs> I got out of seminary in 85, so, yep, you would have been right in there. Okay. Uh, yep, but, you're old. <laughs> I'm old. I can pass. But, yeah, this is an interesting issue here when we're trying to deal with this kind of stuff. Well, how do we um, address this? You know, which, which, side the, which side do you err on? And I guess part of me is just going to have to, you know, back up the school and just kind of like, mm, maybe this guy, you have to kind of, err on the side of caution. You know, I mean, it comes down to the, they're they're trying to do the best they can to deal with it, this issue. I mean, gangs are a huge problem in schools, um, especially in this air in that area. You know, different areas. Obviously, you know, here in rural Iowa, we don't really have a lot of problems with gangs because um, <laughs> they'd be like riding around on tractors. Although they'd have a really hard time, you know. If if somebody decided to have like uh, green and yellow as their gang colors, there's no way you can ban it because <laughs> everyone's wearing John Deere stuff. The color of corn. Okay, well, <laughs> but but what if they just insulted them for wearing the crucifixes? Which is the case in Riverdale, Utah, um, <clears throat> where there was a Walmart. And a Muslim woman uh, was wearing a face veil, and the cashier told her, please don't stick me up. 
Oh, man. This is, this is one of those things you look at it and you go, oh, come on. You know? <laughs> I mean, I, the, the question is, all right, how many uh, practicing Muslims or, or people that, um, you know, that wear the sort of Muslim garb, shall we say, um, live in this area? And I'm thinking it, ha- it can't be very many. Not in Utah, no. No. <laughs> yeah, because in Utah, you're either, uh, you're either Mormon or uh, Roman Catholic. Well, we have some Lutherans out there. There's a few. Not very many. But yeah, you're right. I mean, but I, it's a... Um, yeah, this was just, this was just simply completely insensitive. Mm-hmm. I mean, it really was. Um, um, what a very insensitive thing to say to someone shopping. Uh, yeah, so they're, um, the, the employees in the store, sounds like the, the whole staff is undergoing sensitivity training, uh, specifically to the Islamic faith and Muslim culture. Uh, so this is Walmart's efforts to uh, kind of make nice. And uh it says the associate in question was disciplined in accordance with our employment policies as a result of the situation. They don't give any details. In other words, the man for What kind of stupid remark was that? <laughs> yeah. I, my oldest daughter works at works at Walmart here in Massachusetts, and I guarantee you, he said something stupid like that. Some sort of stupid remark like that, you know, that, and probably a, a note in the person's file about it, too. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, you know. yeah, if it happens again, or, or anything close to it, you're in trouble. That's right, well, I'm not in trouble, you're fired, you're gone. Um, I mean, Walmart takes customer relations very, very seriously. But, you know, it's, um, it's just a very insensitive thing to do, to say. I mean, I wouldn't appreciate it. Um, and we have, I mean, I come across multiple people all the time up here. I don't know how many you come across in rural Iowa, but, uh. There's a lot down in Cedar Rapids. Not too many, you know, in our county. Yeah, but here, I mean, um, people work in the I work down in the post office. Uh, a woman, we're, we're the model from Dale. They just have learned to point out, you know, you want to be treated with respect, you treat others with respect. It's a very simple thing process. Right? So I just don't understand the, you know, the person being that, I don't know, insensitive, that stupid. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, there's a question of, okay, was is this person so um, completely clueless as to think that 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 all people who are Muslim are <laughs> the goofy thing is is Muslims aren't known for being you know for holding up Walmarts you know <laughs> <laughs> right, right like you know if, if she was the, the sort of stereotypical um, uh, Muslim if you're gonna go with a stereotype um, sticking you up would be the least of your worries <laughs> no I, I, she's making a insensitive stupid joke that's what it is. She's making a joke, she's trying to be funny, and it just was not. You know, and it wasn't. It was, it was an insensitive, foolish comment. And, uh, but, you know, the other thing is people do that. And I guess, you know, partly is, you know, I mean, somebody makes a stupid, insensitive comment to me, I try to, okay, fine, go on with life. You know, mm-hmm. uh, I don't know if this needs to be an international incident. Uh, you know, the, you know, the, you know this, this council of Islam, American Islamic relations, you know, to file a individual complaint with Walmart because it's one of the people who get a, got insulted. And sometimes we, I think we need to work on developing a thicker skin in mind. Yeah. You know, you know especially, especially since I don't think she meant to be offensive. Well, you know, the other, I, th- this was kind of interesting. Uh, we apl- this is the executive director of the uh, council's Nevada chapter. <laughs> uh, we applaud Walmart for taking appropriate action to resolve this incident. Right? The group doesn't have an office in Utah. So what does that tell you about how many Muslims are in Utah? <laughs> Not too many. But yeah, it just yeah. I mean, that's that's probably what it was—a stupid joke—and and yeah, it kind of blew up. 
But, um, yeah. But, but you know, but, well, I was just going to say, you know, what if, uh, what if instead this person had written an article in the Salt Lake Tribune? That's right. But, uh, that's exactly what I was thinking, actually. Instead of coming mob and brother and we tell them gay people are doing what they're doing. His name is Peter Danzig, and uh, he used to be Mormon until very recently. A very good Mormon. Yep, uh, practicing, and he was in the he played music in their uh, services and and different things. Very very you know sort of a your uh, you want to call him a card carrying Mormon or a. Oh, I, I mean this guy was he was uh, married in the temple at Temple Square. Uh, he played in the LDS Orchestra in, uh, in Temple Square. Uh, he, uh, she also, uh, both of the, he and his wife both played, as a matter of fact. Uh, he did his, um, <clears throat> he went on mission. He composed uh, pieces for more pageants. He taught uh, hymns to children. Uh, I mean, this guy was a very, very good mother. So he had some questions about one particular thing that was going on in the LDS church. And that is, he uh, um, was he questioned their position on homosexuality. And the, L- the Latter-day Saints, the Mormons, uh, have long been uh, very conservative, taken up what I would call a biblical position on homosexuality, although they have encouraged... Um, uh, a lot of activism in uh, as far as uh, gay marriage and and all that kind of stuff, and um, and so they well there's there's even the article actually has a a chart uh, showing their involvement since 1998 in uh, dealing with gay marriage and that um, the most recent was September 2007. Uh, LDS Apostle Jeffrey R. Holland reiterates the church's position that same-sex attraction is not a sin, only acting on it is immoral, which we would agree with. Uh, he does not try to explain the causes of these attractions, but acknowledges that they are real. So, um, but Jeff wrote an article, or I'm sorry, Peter, um, wrote an article to the Salt Lake Tribune or a, a letter to the editor sort of thing, and um, basically questioned the church's suggestion that uh, Mormons write to their congressmen with their feelings on uh, on a gay marriage ban or a constitutional amendment. And, and, you know, he said, well, that's, that's not really appropriate for the church to be doing. Well, the other part, too, was there was a guy by the name of uh, Jeffrey Nielsen who, um, because of his viewpoints on uh, homosexuality, was fired from Brigham uh, Brigham Young University, which was the second one. The first one was uh, history professor Steve Epperson, and he, and he, uh, well, he kept quiet about that. This guy spent his time serving the homeless rather than attending church. But when uh, this Jeffrey Nielsen... Uh, uh, was fired for arguing in a column that it was wrong for the LDS Church to to oppose gay male marriage and to list uh, Mormons. Uh, Danzig supported him in a, his letter, and he got tossed out too. Well, he didn't exactly get. This is one of those things where you go, "Well, he didn't get fired. Uh, they just kind of leaned on him till he quit." <laughs> now. If you read this, well, I don't know. I mean, it says within a week, the LDS contacted Danzig with their concerns. They suspended him from the orchestra. Uh, you know, so that right there is, you know, pretty, pretty st- strong. Uh, yeah. But he wasn't, I mean, they, they didn't say you're out of the church. He wasn't excommunicated. So, I mean, they definitely let, you know, let him know, you know, <laughs> They're gonna make you an offer you can't refuse, you know. <laughs> um, but so he he left. 
Okay, but now here we're dealing with an issue. Okay, so you've got a member of your congregation singing in the choir. And you open up the paper, and you see a letter from this member saying, I don't, I, 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 I think it's wrong to be opposing gay marriage. I got a bad feeling about this. I mean, are you going to sit there and go, hmm, that's nice, and just let it go? Well, I'm definitely going to go talk to him, you know, and, you know, say, well, it's, it's good to, um, it's good to be honest, but at the same time, I do agree that this didn't need to go to the newspapers. Although, see, this is further complicated by the fact that, uh, he did, he was, um, in discussions. It's not like he just out of the blue wrote a letter. He'd been discussing the, with, this with church leaders for a while. And, um, I, you know, I don't know. I, I don't know what I would do in that situation. Um, but I, I don't know that I'd excommunicate him. So, you know, I'll say it's just, here's my, my, my thing. Does the LDS church have the right to remove him saying, um, you know, on the basis of, of basically advocating a false teaching? Yes, I'm not going to argue that. What I think his main argument seems to be, as I read this article, and then there was another article about how the LDS responded to it, was that there's, it seems to be a little bit, uh, inconsistent. And who you are depends if they're going to do something about you. Uh, for example, uh, several members wrote letters to the Tribune defending Yeltsin and sharing his view. He is unaware of disciplinary action taken against any of those letter writers. Uh, mm -hmm. Bill Bradshaw, a recently retired BYU professor of microbiology, has given several public addresses about the science of homosexuality, in detailing evidence that are strong, argues strongly for a biological origin. He is also the chairman with his wife, Marge Bradshaw, a family fellowship, a support group for LDS families with gay and lesbian children. Um, now, um, after a, man, a relative complained to their bishop, the man invited the Bradshaws for discussion. Our bishop is very favorably, responded very favorably to the conversation. He was very sympathetic. Uh, so, you know. Well, it's at least inconsistent. Yeah, and that's, that's the problem is, you know, and again, you know, it is tough to be consistent. You have to try, you really strive. It was mm -hmm. almost like, well, you know, your problem was you complained. Get the letter published. If you hadn't done that, you've been okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> don't ask, don't tell. Back to where <laughs> we were last week. <laughs> yeah, we're in trouble. Uh, two weeks ago, anyway. Um, yeah, I, you know, this is, uh, although at the same time, this is an issue of, you know, for him, of or if you disagree with the teachings of the church, you know, do you want to remain a member of a church in, with where you disagree with the teachings? Of course, if he believes in most of the Mormon teachings, he's not going to find, and, and just as he agrees on that one point, he's not going to find on a, a, another uh, sort of Mormon church that is a, a pro-gay um, church. They don't exist. <laughs> right. Well, it's a, you know, uh, but people, a lot of people I know are members of the churches but they don't agree with everything that's taught. True. I don't know if I, I probably said this line on, on the podcast before. We'll get a note saying, yeah, you used that one. But there was a, uh, this woman up here who was interviewed and she said, in, in, she, She's expressing all these viewpoints where she disagrees with, with uh, the Roman Catholic Church, abortion and contraception and gay marriage and two or three others. And, you know, as I said, asked her about her being Catholic, and she said, uh, she said, well, the Pope is, you know, has his views, and I have my views, and I'm just as good a Catholic as he is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, it was just like, okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and that's the reality is that, um, you take just about any teaching. Um, I, in fact, I, I mentioned, actually in my sermon this morning, I mentioned that, uh, I, I use as an example that 
article that we talked about about the gay couples in the um in, in the news the the directory mm-hmm. and um I'm pretty sure I saw at least one person kind of roll their eyes as soon as I mentioned gay marriage like and it was just it kind of felt like oh yeah he's on that kick you know <laughs> so person in question isn't actually a member of our congregation but you know it's one of those things that you know uh, you know it's the same person who was wearing the Hillary Clinton button a few weeks ago no no (laughs) so but you know I mean that that is the reality that I I actually I had uh, somebody who was going through classes with me one time said um, so if I want to join this congregation, how completely do I need to agree with the teachings of this church? <laughs> I said, that's a good question. <laughs> you know, and and I mean, they're you know they're very serious because they they wanted to if they're going to join the congregation, they wanted to be it you know to have integrity and and be honest about what their beliefs were and stuff. And as it worked out, by the time we were all done with um, with our with classes, they were in, completely in agreement with everything that I told them. So um, so you know it worked out okay. But it, it did raise that question. And you know there's always going to be um, there there are definitely people in our congregation that um, the question uh, our stand on close communion and exactly where you draw that line. Or I had a woman. By the time I went to my pastor's class and joined my church, it's my first congregation. And she struggled with infant baptism. Yeah. She really struggled with infant baptism. Just really had troubles with it. I'm just not sure I believe it. She says, but I don't have a problem with anything else. But I just, you know, I just really struggle, you know, with this idea that, you know, baptism grants faith and stuff. She said, uh, so, uh, she could, she, I can't remember if she joined or not, uh, but she did tell me, she said, look, if I do join, she says, number one, I've had my kids. I'm approaching 40. This is not going to be an issue for me anymore. Mm-hmm. Number two, I'll keep my mouth shut. There's <laughs> <laughs> something to be said for that. So, you know, because you know, her kids came to our school, she said, I'm not the same thing about my about the kids, specifically the kids about my my private questions, unless they you know deliver you know flat out ask me. I'm not going to say anything to anybody about the congregation. But uh, you know, but this is just a no. This is an area that she struggled with, and she was really honest about it. You know, it, it, maybe it's a question of, um, you know, I I I, I want to be scriptural, and it, this is. Uh, the question of, of venial sin versus mortal sin. Um, what I'm talking about is, are we talking about a, um, well, maybe it's not exactly that, but a, the difference is a, a venial sin is, um, it's a sin of weakness. It's, mm-hmm. it's yeah, I, I know this is wrong, um, and I keep doing it, and I feel bad about it, and, and I'm struggling with it, and I'm trying to do better, and, you know, uh, you know, and like, like alcoholism is, is, is generally a good example of that. You know, I'm, I'm trying to, it, but it can be it can be anything you know depending on the person and, and what goes on in their hearts. Whereas a mortal sin, the idea with that is is not what the sin is, but it's like, well, I know what's wrong, but I don't care. I'm going to do it anyway, and the heck with God. And um, you know, and that's the real dangerous thing. And so the question here is: is this guy, you know, it, it is he thumbing his nose at the church and saying, um, you know, I don't I don't care what the Bible says. This is what I think, and, and and period. Or is he saying, you know, this is I understand the Bible differently. I understand, you know, in his case, the Book of Mormon differently, or you know, whatever, and and uh, doctrine and covenants and all that kind of stuff. And you know, where's where's he coming from? And because I I think that a, a lot of these situations, you have to look at where is a person coming from. You know, what are their what is their rationale? What are their arguments in favor of their position? Right. And you know. If if they say you know this is where I'm at I mean I'm sure that there's members of our congregation that um that really struggle with um uh, with creation and and uh, and stuff like that and Jim and I Jim and I have talked about that before and and you go okay you know 
where where are you in this and why are you at that point? Mm-hmm. And in this particular case, uh, he, you know, I came from his work as a social worker, his studies, you know, in social work. That's where the questions began to develop. And, you know, so you got to you know, understand that and kind of work with it and kind of deal with people where they are. But, uh, yeah, it's really kind of bad, like you said, when this kind of stuff hits the newspapers. And then, then, then you're debating it in the newspapers. And Although you know, I have to say... It. The comments, especially on the follow-up story, were really good. I mean, there were some really thoughtful, insightful uh, comments on there. So if you, if you go read the story, especially the follow-up story, um, go read the comments. There's a lot. It's a big discussion, which is no big surprise. And some of it is, you know, just people kind of toeing the party line. And other people are, are you know, kind of sticking their jabs in. But if you kind of weed through the chaff, um, there's some really insightful comments in there. I just so. got the I just got chaff. I got tired of reading it. <laughs> okay, well, let's go to Uganda. <laughs> okay. Uh, where is that? Oh yeah, here we go. This is the the founder. Oh, Moses David. Um, we are the the. the that the family of God has come back again. I thought this group was over and gone. I'll be back. And see, I, I hadn't really heard of these guys before. Oh, oh well, well, first let's talk about them, then I'll tell you where I first came across them. But Oh, yeah, yeah, Moses, Dave, and the family of God. Um, I'll give you a little background on this guy, too, from my cult days. Um, <clears throat> from your cult days? Yeah, well, I used to I used to spend a lot of time researching and studying cults. Uh, oh, so okay. I thought maybe you used you know. to be a member. <laughs> yeah, you're the one who almost became Mormon. Anyway, um, True. Um, they call themselves this cult. It's called they call it an international Christian group. Uh, with the reputation for glorifying sex as a form of worshiping Jesus has been in Uganda for the last nine years. I guess this is post Idi Amin. I think you know what the problem is just as well as I do. uh, We believe in communal groups just like Israel's kibbutz system, where everything is shared. They share their children and clothes, and there's complete sexual sharing. Disgusting! I don't remember hearing about that at a kibbutz. But, but due to cultural sensitivities, he admits that most of the family doctor is not being practiced to the letter and spirit in Uganda. That's good. <laughs> it says, uh, and, and by the way, uh, Peterson um, is the, uh, I just lost it. The head of Radioactive Productions. Yeah. Um, which is their radio uh, missionary arm. Uh, his three daughters uh, wrote a book called Not Without My Sister, and they left uh, because of the organization's teachings. <laughs> Although it says later on that um, that they were... Um, I have evidence that the girls were happy in the family, showing a collection of photographs, letters, and cards as proof. Yeah, they were happy. That's why they left. <laughs> right. Uh, um, yeah, according to the trio, Berg encouraged followers to be comfortable with all sexual matters, including masturbation, extramarital sex, sex with teenagers, and even incest. Yeah. Uh, and that is all true. Uh, Moses David was actually, uh, started out as Christian Missionary Alliance. His parents were actually missionaries. And uh, somewhere in the sick of the Jesus Revolution, he became a wide eyed founded there, there of himself and the children of God. But now I was telling him every night for being out of high school, high school. He would have been a best real screen. Anyway, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, you would have been about probably the probably the. Fifteen to eighteen, five, five, four, five, 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 five
and started having that track tracks to us. To us. And, and, to high uh, school kids? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, probably be pretty popular among high school kids. <laughs> and I remember one of them, 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 but that was that was that was most of the day that they uh uh and uh, and he he is he is he's in the market with market action with action sure sure because because you know with life you like have always had a stuff coming up they'll come out and have like actual shows and shows and uh he uh, he, uh, he, uh, he would only only uh, uh communicate communicate through the mobile letters, letters. Oh, I've heard of that mm-hmm. and he yeah, sent these sent these mobile letters out yeah 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 but it was but it was, but it was uh, uh, yeah, yeah. It was just, it was just that he was a big, 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 the music is totally structured, actually. Uh, yeah, the system said, you say, you know, you know, have more than one partner of another guy. And so, the so, uh, abuse of these systems. Well, <clears throat> I, I love how, you know, I was, I was looking at this, and it says, uh, they're encouraged to be comfortable with all sexual matters. Oh, you read that. Yeah, um, yeah. I like how it said, uh, he discouraged homosexuality, but was liberal with lesbianism. It's like I, I saw that, and then uh, it says uh, the three girls claim that some adults used these liberties to abuse children sexually in the name of loving them. Uh, female members were <laughs> my daughter's still up. <laughs> What? She's getting an idea in the night. What? She's getting an idea in the night. Yeah. <laughs> they were uh, encouraged to win converts um, however they could. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, but like I said, it's a thing. 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 I call that Saudi fisherman. Saudi fisherman. Uh, he was a very, very, you know, you know strange, strange individual. individual. He really was. Well, he, was. Well, he died, he died, years, 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 and all the other things that you mentioned, 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 you know, this reminds me of, isn't this what was going on in Corinth? At, or was it Ephesus in Paul's time? Um... <laughs> The Temple of Artemis, I believe. Yeah, yeah, that was that was that was boring. Well, it was actually very people in Corinth and uh uh Ephesus Ephesus. I call some of the things that they were considered to say that they were actually more and more. Um um that's a point like some of the other props that it put up. Oh yeah, okay, okay, you can go and pour it on the funny about the funny about the pools of the floor and tiny tiny now. I did, I did, too. Get out, get out. It's just this thing, thing we, 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 we would rail about. Rail about. That's, 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 yeah, but they had a bunch of stuff in there. But, but, there's no, 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 you know, you know, people say, well, what about, what about all the stuff in the Bible? I, you know, you know, you hear, hear, and this, and to the pure, all the options are full free of free from the law. Yeah, except for uh, Jesus talked about adultery too. Right, right. In fact, you know when he when he, the um, the adulterous woman, the he who has no sin, cast the first stone. 
He never said it wasn't sin what she was doing. And more to the point, he said, go and sin no more. <laughs> well, even Jesus called it sin. Sorry. One man, one woman, married for life. That's God's definition. But those are the necessary criteria. But whenever we get to get I mean, I mean, the idea is a new revelation that has a church that you've never heard of before. And I know I know you have an habit. And now I can isolate the and we bring people out to the house of their family and they can relate to the being told that God is not in the, not in the, not in the, that they possess the enemy. It's, it's very simple, it's very simple, very simple, you know, and, and yeah, he went, he went from, and, and that's why they're, why they're in the system, system. 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 In the community, the community, the community, the community, the community, and, 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 up until the end. And so speaking of the end. In this case, there's a false Moses, Moses, but going, going to the end. <laughs> True. Yeah. The apocalypse. <laughs> and the four horsemen. Oh, sorry, you're more of a DC guy, aren't you? Mm-hmm. Anyway, we'll switch to this one instead. Um, scientists predict when the world will end. Jesus said no one knows the day or the hour, uh, but uh, apparently they've narrowed it down. They said that it's going to happen in 7.6 billion years, but uh, we only have about a billion years left on Earth um, before the sun slowly expanding uh, boils off the oceans and reduces our planet to an uninhabitable cinder. <laughs> and uh, so, so here's what we need to do. Um, we need to tame an asteroid to swing by the Earth every few thousand years, slowly nudging the Earth into higher solar orbit enough to outpace the sun's own outward growth. Or I was thinking we should just send one of our representatives as a little baby in a space capsule to another planet to, um, you know, to, to teach them and lead them and um but but somewhere where he would be like them and yet different. Yeah, but anyway, anyway, it's um, some now, yeah. Ain't a lot, ain't a lot. I don't really I don't care. care. <laughs> I'm not gonna be around here and see it. <laughs> you know, I guess no. we need to prepare now. <laughs> <laughs> No, no. Yeah, this is all very good. It's very good. It's very good. Yeah, the next year, each year, he's just really, really is. 21, 21, 60. That's going to happen for another, another 30 years. I'll be calling him again here that year. I'm not going to care. I'm not going to care. I'm not going to care. But, you know... This this reminds me of uh, back in the 80s when everybody was all uptight about, you know, um, nuclear proliferation and, um, you know, the end of the world. And, boy, you know, somebody pushed the button. I just watched uh, uh, War Games with Matthew Broderick. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's that's a great, great movie. Oh, uh, excellent movie. Um, but it, it was really interesting watching it now, you know, like, what, 20 years later? Because it was... You know, it, it, it was really uh, very indicative of the fear um, of that, you know, somebody could push a button and that's it. That's the end of the world. And the thing is, you know, this stuff comes along, whether it be nuclear prolif- proliferation, whether it be global warming, you know, which we've also heard is going to cause the end of the world long before this, um, or at least, uh, you know, <laughs> water world. Um or, you know, any number of, uh, of different catastrophes that we're told about. Oh, there was a, a asteroid that flew rather close to the Earth not too long ago. Maybe we should have tamed it. Um, but, uh, 
you know, you look at this and people are so worried about the end of the world. And folks, you don't have to worry about the end of the world because number one, there's no, um, you know, astral cosmic uh, phenomenon that is going to bring that about. Um, you know, it's not going to happen because of an asteroid or the sun, um, at least not the S-U-N sun, right? Um, the end of the world is going to happen when <laughs> when the sun comes to earth, but it's when the son of God comes to earth, uh, when Jesus uh, returns on the last day. Uh, not, And he's going to pick the day. It's not going to be chosen by some random cosmic event or anything that we do for that matter. Yeah, the yeah, whole thing is getting the idea that, that, that things that things that we need to be are they are. And it's like, I mean, I can do this. Yeah, or, 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 you know, you know there's a big thing. You got, you got earned her. And God, you got everything done. And God's been down to change again and again when he comes to the second time. And so that's what we're looking for. That's our whole, that's our whole. Yeah. Yeah. What a whole point that we have. I mean, I mean. But what a what a wonderful wow. thing to sing your sister say, well, well, you're just gonna kind of go away and wait in years and years and some years and years and years and some point some point in years and years it's gonna you know, we can totally destroy you for another or not. Uh it's not as bad as the actual whole thing. You know, I mean that's that's I'm not I'm not gonna do that. Kind of feeling of hopelessness and and uh, alienation and why and why hopelessness why why that's the purpose of this thing. Mm-hmm. You know, all the all the hard and anxious things that happen like that. By the way, Peter Peter tells us that when the crisis requires you to hear, you know, the Lord is going to fire fire as well. Well, and he says, "Behold, what kind of worker do you need? That need that." Be holy, holy, the bright, bright, follow God, God, A M A M. And another one, another the understand is that we will be in Christ and Christ is to change our hearts and our lives and our lives and what Christ and Christ is. Yeah. There's, um, in, uh, Revelation, it says that the, it says something about the fire will dissolve the elements. And, um, years ago, People said, well, you can't dissolve elements. This shows the Bible's wrong. And then we split the atom. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, like, you know, that, that's not to say that, you know, I don't know if that's uh, uh, symbolic, you know, if it's actually going to be some sort of nuclear explosion um, that's going to destroy creation. I, something tells me it's going to be something much bigger than that. Um, and And much more, you know, not just dissolving the elements, but you know, <laughs> either breaking it down to, uh, you know, just some big neutron mass or, you know, who knows? I'm kind of curious how it's all going to go down. Um, I, frankly, I don't think it's something we can really explain scientifically. Um, so, but I, it's definitely not something we need to worry about. And, you know, I mean, the whole point is, is that we don't need to fear. Yes, the world is going to come to an end. Uh, but it's going to be replaced with an eternal one. And we don't need to fear that because that is, um, you know, God has promised us that he has a new creation for us that is so much better uh, than what we have. And that, you know, he's given to us freely by the blood of his son. Jesus rose and so we will too. Oh, very nice, Ben. So that's it for tonight. And maybe you have you have maybe you have you have I don't know I don't know maybe you maybe you're looking for the world the world maybe just looking for the end of the world cast cast hey if you feel like you're bad you're you're just the best there out there but anyway anyway if you gotta be gotta be got you know you know when you have to have uh cross the cross the podcast podcast that you can on your cut um or you can call it voice mail that's how I've got it it's got it very 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 um, and, or you can send us a voicemail at 206-350-4749. Uh, just don't send me a link through the voicemail because <laughs> I'll never get it right. Um, cause they tend to be really long. 
But um, but yeah, if 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 you see a link, since until I get that uh, that member sign up thing fixed, um, if you send a link to that email address, that'd be great. <laughs> so, um, and um, uh, oh, and just a reminder, another way you can get a hold of us if. Um, and I've been pretty good about remembering lately. Um, you can just, if you're watching this in iTunes, you can just click on the screen right now and it'll take you right to it. And I also a reminder that, um, if you're listening to this, um, you can catch the video too. Um, and if you're watching this at YouTube or Rever or Yahoo video or one of those other places, um, this is available as a podcast. Um, or you can, you can just go to our website, crossfeednews.com and watch it there. And it's better quality, much better uh, video quality um, than what you get on those video sharing sites. So. Okay. Okay. Anything else, my friend? My friend. No, that's that's it. Hey, hey, so, hey, 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 h